This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and before we dive into actually loading our player information, I want to talk a little bit more about how we can kind of parse the information that is coming from PHP and coming from the server when we request it. Ultimately, what we're getting back is a string of information, particularly when we use this www.txt syntax. Uh, we're just getting a string, and we want to be able to get information from that string. Um, right now, all we've been worried about to this point is either getting an error code and the description behind it, or just a single character, and so it's not been anything that we've really had to pick through. But as we want to get more information, say for example, an error code plus the score that our player has, or if you had even more uh, levels of data, you know, maybe number of coins, number of points for this level you've reached, etc., you're going to want to be able to break that data into pieces. So I want to talk about how we can do that most, or most efficiently um, at this time. So to start this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a kind of test script in here. I'm just going to call this uh, web test. This is just going to be for us to kind of work with right now, kind of a um, sandbox that we can do. I'm going to add this to our main camera. And we're going to ultimately end up deleting this. But for right now, we'll use it in here. I'm going to open this up. in Visual Studio, and I'm going to delete the update method. I will keep the start method. However, I'm going to make this an I enumerator. And you can actually do this. You can totally make start into an I enumerator, and it just means that it's going to run as a coroutine instead of as a normal method. Um, and for now, I'm not going to do any variables or anything in here. Everything's going to come from the server for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, kind of like we did in our registration page, we'll say www, and I'll just call this um, I'll call this request this time, just so it's not the exact same name. Um, and then we're going to say equals a new www, and we're going to call this um, h. We're going to um, send this to the URL of http slash slash localhost slash sql connect slash webtest.php. This is going to be a, um, this is going to be, oh, whoops, I have to put this in, all into quotes. That's why this is looking funny. There we go. Um, this is going to be a PHP file that we create. And we're going to say again, yield return, in this case, request is the name of it. So once request comes back with information, then we can do stuff with that information. So let's jump away from this for just a second here and go into Sublime Text. And we're going to create a new file. And we're going to save this one, control shift save, as webtest.php. We're going to put in our brackets again. So that's opening bracket, question mark, PHP down a few lines, closing bracket, so that means everything in here is PHP code. All we're going to do this time is we're going to say echo, and I'm going to pass out just board to bits. You can put whatever you'd like here. So right now, all this is happening is when this gets called, it's going to spit back a string board to bits. Go back into our, so we can go back into um, web test here, uh, or C sharp web test. And we can say, once we get back this request, we could say debug.log request.text. And this will return to us. And this will print out, rather, for us whatever is being sent from the PHP. So we can save our file, go back to Unity, hit play, and we see that board to bits gets printed here. So this is again one string of information, which is can be can be useful, can give us some sort of message that we can um, deliver. But it might be nice to actually have other information we can actually work with. Particularly, we can have like multiple discrete numbers, for example. So let's say we also want to pass out a number, say the number 500. What we can do is in our PHP here, we could say echo board to bits and then echo. Uh, 500, save that, go back to Unity, hit play again, and we get that back, 
but it's now just kind of appended. It's, it's all one string. It doesn't get separated into multiple pieces. So we need to specifically do separation on our own. And we can do this relatively easily, fortunately, using another character, kind of like we did with our dollar sign character in the last, um, in the last video, we can say, quote, backslash T. And what this does is this is basically the equivalent of hitting the tab key on our keyboard. Um, this will create this sort of tab space between these two pieces of information. We could even append all these together. We could simply say port to bits dot slash t dot 500. And this is the same idea as doing these all three separately. They both have the same ultimate result. If I hit save here now, we can go back to Unity, hit play again. And we see now that we have board to bits a tabbed space, and then 500. The reason this is useful to us is because the tab is not something we're typically using inside of our data. So we can use that as what's called the delimiter or a way of breaking up the code in our um, C Sharp scripts. So what we can do here is if we jump back to Unity now, instead of just taking the text, we can actually split up the text using a string method called string.split. So when our request returns, we can say request.text.split and then pass in some character that should be used to split up um, each chunk of uh, text that we want. And so we're going to say single quote for a character um, and then we're going to use the backslash T to say anytime you see a tab, um, split up this into a bunch of different strings. Now we need to store this somewhere, so I'm going to have a string array called web results equals request.txt.split. And then we can use this like we would any other array. I could say something like for each string s in web results, s dot or just debug dot log s. And so now what happens is that these are each going to be treated as their own separate strings within this array. So if I jump back to Unity and hit play now, we see that it prints, even though it was all passed as board to bits tab 500, board to bits is its own string, 500 is its own string, the tab has been kind of gotten rid of, it was used to separate the two of them. In addition, we can go one step further with this Say I just want to debug dot log web results zero because I know that's the name of my character, so I can just print that out. But now I have, I know the other thing is a number, or at least it was a number. It was 500, it got converted to a string, but now I want to use it as a number again. Well, we can do that with a couple of additional methods that are tied to integers and to floats. And the first one is int.parse, the other one is float.parse, and both of these, what they do is you pass in a string and C Sharp will try to convert it into a number for you. So in this case here, I know that web results number index one is a number, so this should parse. And so I could store this in something. I could say int um, web number equals results.parse. Then I could say something like web number times equals two to double it. And then I could finally actually debug.log web number. So using this as an integer and now actually print it out um, the end result after I've done some math on it. So with all of this now, I can go back to Unity one more time, hit play. And we see that we get board to bits and then that 500 gets converted back to a number, doubled and then printed out as 1000. So using tab delimiting and splitting we can get multiple chunks of information and using int parse or float parse, we can convert those strings back into numbers that we can use in our game. And that's gonna be what we're gonna be using once we load up our users' information and get their scores and want to start using it in our game. We're gonna start on that in the next um, video where we talk about logging in. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.